And so this is Ed Crow. Uh, thanks for joining me today on this Thursday. Um, and we will go over health risk assessments today. Uh, just a couple quick things. I see some new people on the call. And uh, we record all our webinars. So if you want to watch a future webinar, we usually do them on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 1 o'clock on various topics, most often um, revolving around Medicare, but sometimes other products. But nonetheless, if you want to watch, but if you can't make it at that time, if you just register, we'll send you the recording. So you always get the recording if you register, even if you can't actually attend the webinar. So having said that, we're going to talk about health, health risk assessments today and just go over them. I'll give you a brief understanding of uh, how you do them, uh, some examples of carriers you can do them with, which it's a lot of them at this point, and how and when they pay you for completing them. So, and you'll notice as I go through, some people call them HRAs, health risk assessments. Um, some people call them different acronyms and names. I'll give you some examples of the major carriers and what they call them, but uh, it all means we're all talking about the same thing. So first thing I wanted to start with is why do companies do the health risk assessment? I mean, if, if you talk to the carriers or, or look it up, they'll say that they use them to better understand uh, the health needs of the new members they're bringing on. Health risk assessments are something that CMS has definitely uh, encouraged the carriers to do, um, and they use that information to more or less assess a new member's needs, uh, see if there's any kind of special programs or services or something um, particular to or specific to a, a health condition they may have, um, and that way they know ahead of time uh, that they may want to enroll that person in that program. Most of them at this point will provide some information to the primary care, and you might think primary care HMO only, but even if a primary has been assigned on a PPO plan, uh, they'll forward some of the applicable information to the PCP to encourage follow-up that may be needed. That PCP even may make a personalized care plan for the person. Um, and just is, an, is a note on the side, personalized care plans are helpful anyway because if you've ever had somebody with a Medicare Advantage plan and they need skilled nursing care, um, or if they need medically skilled home health care, they're going to need a, a, a care of plan any, a plan of care anyway from their primary to, to get coverage for that anyway. So certainly doesn't hurt. Um, the ultimate goal of the HRA uh, basically is to keep the people as healthy as possible. So, you know, maintaining uh, medic ongoing medical conditions, getting people to, uh, if they're at high risk, getting them to do their physical and, and just trying to manage conditions so they don't turn into something more, uh, more, um, you know, severe, basically, more or less. So that's really why they're encouraging, why everybody suddenly is encouraging the health risk assessment. And I know Medicare also, I think part of that goes into the star rating for the plan um, based on what percentage of their population has done a health risk assessment. So kind of a everybody wins thing. Uh, carrier wins because they can it helps with the star rating. The member wins because the carrier can be more familiar with what's going on with them. Uh, and is the agent you win to because there's there's money in it for you for your time and effort. So I mentioned before that we'll use a lot of different names for the same thing. I mean, these are all they're all considered a health risk assessment, but the different companies call them different things. Um, United calls it a health assessment. Aetna calls it a value-based enrollment, the VBE. Humana, their member care assessment. Uh, WellCare uses the VBE as well. Uh, and Cigna actually calls it what we know it as a health risk assessment. So you'll hear different acronyms thrown around, all meaning the same thing. You'll also see as we go through this, their process to complete these are very similar from carrier to carrier. Uh, comp is similar too. We'll talk about that at the end. Um, but the process to complete it is, is also pretty much the same uh, from company to company. And these are just some examples. There's certainly other carriers that do these, um, that do the health risk assessment. I just wanted to mention a few in this. So you know there's an HRA that can be done with a lot of carriers. Um, how do you do it? How long does it take is the big question. So all the HRAs are pretty much the same. You are answering questions, a series of questions, 
um, either on the member's behalf by talking to them or some companies have functions for the member to do it. They range, but most of the companies are anywhere from 8 to 20 questions. Uh, being on the lower end of questions or on the higher end, depending on how they answer some of the earlier questions. So some of the earlier questions will trigger additional questions, but they all range from 8 to 20 questions. This process should take about 5 to 10 minutes. The assessment for just about all these companies is done immediately after or during the appointment. So you do the meeting with the member, the prospect, um, you're completing the enrollment application and it really prompts you to do the, the HRA immediately, um, you know, after the application's been completed but before it's finalized uh, through the carrier's app. Uh, most of these HRAs are done through the carrier's apps. There are some exceptions. We are adding more of these to connect for Medicare. I'll give an example of that in a minute. But just a couple quick examples, like UHC uses Lean. So when you're doing enrollments through their app, through their Lean app, you can conduct the HRA then uh, through the Lean app. Same thing with Aetna. They use Ascend. I'm starting to think maybe I just spelled Ascend wrong. Um, just ignore that part if you don't mind. Um, but you know what I'm talking about. So through Aetna's Ascend app, you can conduct the, the HRA as well. But different companies have it. Some have websites. Um, that you can do it through. So human and well care are examples of that. They have websites where once you complete the application, you then go to a separate site uh, to, to conduct the HRA. Um, so Humana, for example, they use, I think it's pronounced the Revel portal. I've never known how to say it correctly. I've actually used it before. Um, but what's nice about it is with Humana, it's a separate site you go to. So once you complete the enrollment one way or the other, either through Connect for Medicare, uh, through through their online app, you go to a separate site and conduct the HRA. Uh, what's nice about that is there's no time frame with somebody like Humana. You can wait days if you want and, and do it later, but a little more on that in a minute. Most companies, the way the HRA is done is you ask the questions as the agent. So you're doing the, the appointment you then have you go to the portion where is the for the HRA either be it on a company separate website or right through the app is part of the process. You ask the questions, you provide the answers um, from the client, and then the HRA is complete. Some do have the option of doing a phone call. You got to be a little careful with that because if you do the callback option where you complete the enrollment, and then you're going to have the member call a number later. Usually the companies pay you less. Uh, we'll, we'll get to details on that in the payment section, but you usually get paid less for doing the callback option. So usually it makes more sense to do it right then. Plus it only takes five or ten minutes. So it, it, doing the callback usually doesn't make sense. Some of the companies have multi-language options. Aetna certainly does. Um, some don't actually, which is surprising. But Aetna can be in Spanish and it can be in, in other languages as well. And they give you that option right as you're conducting it. Uh, before you get started. But not all carriers do multi-language right now. I talked over my slide a little bit. I jumped ahead. But how long do you have to complete the HRA? Well, it's, it's, it is different for every company. Again, Humana, since you're doing it through a separate site, you can do it any time after the enrollment. Some companies require that it be done immediately. So you, you can't do it later on unless you're doing the callback option in which you'll get paid less. Others give you different time frames. UHC, I know, is three days, for example. Um, when you do it through lean, it's you have three days to complete the, the HRA. Uh, Devoted is in Florida. They're doing their own thing. They're 14 days. And keep in mind, most of the companies allow HRAs for Advantage, uh, either regular MAPD or dual plans. Devoted is in, in, in Florida, for those familiar. They only allow it for their DSNP. You can't do um, the HRA right now on the regular MAPD. It's just their DSNP. I forgot to mention when we got started, and I usually make a habit of doing it, if you have questions, uh, please send them into the webinar. I'm going to try to answer them at the end um, and maybe even answer them correctly, but I will answer them at the end, so send them into the webinar if you could. Okay, so let's go to the payment section. Uh, as I stated, we're going to be done in just a couple minutes here. This is pretty straightforward. But if you go to the, uh, if we talk about the payments, 
they range from fifty to seventy-five dollars per HR per HRA completed. As I mentioned earlier, be aware of the callback option. If you do the callback option, where they later on they call a number and talk to a representative, it's usually a much lower amount for that. Uh, depends on the company, but it's ten to thirty bucks. I think, for example, like Aetna's is ten. Um, when you could get the Aetna's regular HRA is sixty dollars, so you might as well knock it out right then. Um, so once you complete the HRA, how do you get paid? Well, it, it, it ranges from two weeks to the following month. So again, since we're, I was mentioning Aetna before, they pay about two weeks after you do the HRA. Some companies like United pay the following month. Uh, and again, they'll pay you directly from the carrier, just like you get the commissions. It's just a separate listed commission payment that comes in. For anybody on the phone who is part of an agency or owns an agency, I can tell you there are not overrides on HRA payments. I get that question a lot. Uh, that, that's, it's not like with the CMS allowable commission where you have a GA, MGA, or SGA override schedule. HRAs, they don't have overrides on those currently. So it's a, it's a payment to the agent only. There is no override for the FMO, the NMO, um, you know, the agency. A couple things to keep in mind. Some companies require you to do a module um, on the certification to get paid on the HRA, so you got to check on that. Now, we do have, we, that we can email, we have documents for most of the companies in their HRA process, meaning if you have to do a separate module, training module to get paid on HRAs, it lists it there. It also talks about their process and how it's handled, uh, and we can email those out to you uh, in a separate email. would be happy to send them to you if you want them. Um, but some do require a module, some don't. Regarding the HRAs now, when it comes to Connect for Medicare and Sunfire, those not familiar, uh, we offer online enrollment through both of the national companies that do online enrollments, Connect for Medicare and Sunfire. If you don't know those, more or less you get your own username and password, you can log in, and you can submit enrollments through both platforms, compare drugs, save drug lists, check doctors, create doctor lists, compare plans, you can do everything, and enroll people through there uh, via email or text. No face-to-face -face meeting required. Right now, Humana is the only one that you can use Connect for Medicare or Sunfire with and do the HRA through uh, that process. We are working right now with UHC and Aetna and hope to have those ready this year. Um, so you'll be able to do the HRA through Connect for Medicare or Sunfire um, with Humana, UHC, and Aetna, and I'm sure there'll be more to follow. The carriers are starting to realize that a lot of enrollments are being done now through both those national online enrollment platforms, and they're working as a result to get it so you can do the HRA through there as well. So that'll be coming soon. That's it. I uh, kept this one fairly short. We do webinars, like I said, every Wednesday and Thursday. We've done a lot of them on a lot of topics, a lot of them are based on questions that agent, agents ask us about Medicare products, sales, strategies, all those kind of things. We're on YouTube, so we record the webinars and put them on YouTube. All you have to do is search Crow and Associates YouTube, and it'll come right up our channel. So you can look at all the videos there. We can send you, if you want, our go-to channel, so you can see all our webinars through there as well. But, but it's pretty easy to get them on YouTube. So just search Crone Associates YouTube, and you can look at all the different webinars that we've done. We've done a lot of them recently, on, on mostly on Medicare topics. So you might find those helpful. Again, as I mentioned, we'll send a recording to everybody that registered for this webinar. So the, even the people that didn't attend, or for future reference, you want to watch one, but there's a conflict, just register. We'll send you the recording, and you can watch it when you want. And again, I, I think I mentioned a couple times that we do these every Wednesday and Thursday at 1. Now, let me see if there's any questions, and I will attempt to answer them. So let's see if we have any, first of all. Wow, we have no questions. Um, makes my life easier, certainly. I will waste a minute or two here to see if any questions come in. Regarding this process, again, as I mentioned, if you want, we have kind of the documents from the carriers that go with the HRA process. We can certainly email those to you. If you have specific questions on, hey, do I need to do a cert with this company um, prior to getting paid on, on the HRAs I complete. But if you're not doing them, 
I suggest you do them. I mean, it's a free 50 to 75 bucks for an extra five or 10 minutes of work. If you're somebody who's writing a lot of cases, it'll add up. So let's check questions once more. And I don't see anything. So if you do have any questions that come up, feel free just to email me. My contact information is there. You can call our office. Uh, we will send up a follow -up, send out a follow up email. We'll we'll give you a call to see if you have any questions about anything. And other than that, I really appreciate you uh, attending today and coming on. And hope to see you in future webinars. And um, that's it. Have a great uh, long weekend. And um, thanks for coming on. Have a great day. Bye.